Let's go through another example of resonance. Uh, you can see that in this resonance structure, um, or in this picture of this anion, we have a negative charge on this oxygen. So let's try to draw another resonance structure. Well, let's take this lone pair and move it into a pi bond. Now remember that when we say that we're moving the lone pair, that's really just a figure of speech or a way of thinking about it. Remember that the electrons are not really moving around, um, but it helps us to think of moving the electrons around just as a tool for correctly drawing the resonance structures. Now, if all we did was move this lone pair into a pi bond, we would be drawing something illegal. Uh, that would be illegal because this carbon already has a full octet. This carbon already has a full octet, so it can't be receiving a new pi bond unless we also break this pi bond. So we're going to have to do these two moves simultaneously. Um, we're going to have to move this pi bond over here to make room for these electrons that are coming in over here. So here's what our picture is going to look like of our other resonance structure. You can see that we took this lone pair and we took away the lone pair and made it into a pi bond. So the lone pair is gone. Instead, there's now a pi bond. Uh, remember that any double bond has one sigma bond and one pi bond. And in order to make room on this carbon, we had to move this pi bond off and turn it into a lone pair on this left-hand carbon. So here's the lone pair. Now, since this oxygen has electrons moving away from it, it's become less negative. And since this carbon has electrons going towards it, it's become more negative. Remember, the whole point of drawing the resonance structures is to determine where the charges are. So that's something we have to stay focused on. Okay, so here we have another example of resonance. Again, we might put these two resonance structures in brackets. Remember that the molecule is not flipping back and forth between two pictures. Instead, the true picture of the molecule is a kind of blend or average of these two separate pictures. Uh, but now we have a new issue. Um, we know that the true picture is a kind of average of the different resonance structures, um, but it's a weighted average. That means that not every single resonance structure is going to get an equal weight in the blend. Some resonance structures are more significant than other resonance structures. Uh, how can you tell which resonance structures are more significant than others? Well, there's a bunch of different factors to look for, and we'll be covering those as we go along. Uh, for example, which of these two resonance structures seems more significant? Well, again, remember the big thing to focus on is the charges. In this picture, there's a negative charge on an oxygen, and in this picture, there's a negative charge on a carbon. Well, where would the negative charge rather be, on an oxygen or a carbon? You should be familiar with the idea that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. That means that oxygen wants electrons more. You can easily see that by looking at a periodic table. Because oxygen is further to the right in the periodic table than carbon, the oxygen wants electrons and wants negative charges more. So which of these resonance structures is happier, so to speak? This left-hand resonance structure is happier. The oxygen is happier having a negative charge than the carbon would be. Now, nobody's really happy to have a negative charge, but the oxygen is less unhappy about it because it's further to the right in the periodic table. So which of these resonance structures is more significant? This resonance structure on the left is more significant than this resonance structure on the right. Now, that does not mean that this is illegal. This is a perfectly legal and valid resonance structure. And even though it's less significant than this one on the left, it still has some important significance. It's important to think about both of these resonance structures. Uh, however, when we're blending these together in our mind, which of these resonance structures would get greater weight? Well, this resonance structure would get greater weight than this one. So, for example, um, in our, um, when we blend these together, who's going to have a greater charge? The oxygen or the carbon? Well, in this resonance structure, the oxygen has a negative charge, and in this resonance structure, the carbon has a negative charge. But this resonance structure should get more weight. So actually, if we blend these pictures together in our mind, we should imagine the oxygen as having a greater negative charge than the carbon. And again, that shouldn't surprise us because the oxygen is more electronegative. It's more willing to have a negative charge. So now we've introduced uh, a couple of concepts that we don't want to get confused. Um, first of all, remember that some um, resonance structures are legal and some are illegal. 
If something's an illegal resonance structure, you never want to draw it in the first place. You're just breaking the rules if you draw an illegal or an invalid resonance structure. Um, however, even if two resonance structures are both legal, one of them might still be more significant than the other one. Uh, so in this case, both of these resonance structures are legal, but this one on the left is more significant than this one on the right. So don't confuse the idea of significant and insignificant with the idea of legal and illegal. Um, those are two different things. And again, when I say legal or illegal, some instructors would call that valid or invalid. That's not the same thing as being significant or insignificant. How about in our first picture up here, uh, acetate? Which of these two resonance structures was more significant? Well, in this case, these two resonance structures are exactly symmetrical to each other. There's no reason to prefer one of the resonance structures over the other. Uh, because in this resonance structure, an oxygen has a negative charge, and in this resonance structure, the other oxygen has a negative charge. So in this case, in, um, we wouldn't do a weighted average, we would do an equal average. Each of these two structures should get a one-half weight in your mind when you're blending the two structures together. Um, so which of these oxygens is going to end up with more negative charge in the blended picture? Well, they're both going to have an equal amount of the charge. In these two pictures, since these two pictures are each equally significant, when you blend them, you imagine both oxygens as having about the same amount of negative charge. But down here in these resonance structures, the left-hand structure is more significant than the right one. So when you blend these pictures together in your mind, you should imagine the oxygen has, as having more negative charge than the carbon. So again, I said that this picture is less significant than this picture over here, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't draw it. Uh, it still turns out to be important. Now, sometimes there are resonance structures that are legal, but that are so insignificant that it isn't worth drawing them. Sometimes there's a resonance structure which really does play a role in determining the characteristics of a molecule, but it's such a small role that it would be a waste of time and just confusing to draw it in the first place. So as we're going along, we're going to try to learn what resonance structures are illegal to draw, and we're also going to try to learn what are the types of resonance structures that are so insignificant that there's no point drawing them. But that doesn't apply here. This resonance structure is less significant than the structure on the left, but it's still definitely important enough to be worth drawing. Incidentally, um, the name of this anion is an enolate anion. This is an enolate anion. Uh, this is an important type of compound that you will see in the second semester of OCHEM.